Hi everyone, it's Shell from Shell Shell Crochet. Welcome to my September update. Hi everyone, it's Shell. How are you today? Well, it is September the 28th and it is time for my September update. Uh, it's been a busy month and let's get into it. All right, now that we've talked about all the yarn I've gone through in September, let's talk finished objects. First, a couple of things that I've been working on for Halloween. Um, Crystal from Ricola's Crochet Corner is having a Halloween Mal, and the link will be in the description box below. And I have made both a stuffed pumpkin and a little pumpkin sack, as well as a fall rug. There was one day where I just wasn't feeling so great and I just pulled apart one of my Bernat um, blanket yarn uh, stripes that had some orange and green in it. And I just pulled all of the orange and green out and got this. Isn't it adorable? It's so squishy soft. So I'm planning just to stick some of the Halloween treats in it. I don't know if at this point if they're going to be for us or for the people at the door. We'll have to wait and see what the rules allow. But uh, in the meantime, this worked out really cute. And I basically just followed, um, I just winged this, but I have made so many little different bags and sacks before. Um, there's a couple of different tutorials that I've blended together. Uh, and if you're interested in more information, just let me know in the comments and I'm happy to share it with you. And on to the stuffed pumpkin. I love making pumpkins. I've made a whole bunch over the last few years and this is one of the ones I've made in 2020 and I have some more on my agenda. Uh, I follow a tutorial by Jada and Stitches and I have also followed a tutorial in the past from Belle Coco. I'm really looking forward to trying the new one from uh, Chris at the Secret Yarnery, which is on my list to do this week. So yeah, stuffed pumpkins, everybody's probably made them by now if you haven't given them a try. I like to make the apples as well and it's just a fun, um, fun little project. So if you want any more information on this, just let me know in the comments below. Okay, and my final entry for Crystal's Make Along is gonna be this fall rug, and I'm just popping up a picture for you here on the screen. So I had mentioned that I bought a whole bunch of the Lion brand, uh, that 70s yarn on clearance, and I was able to use it all uh, with just a little bit left over in this corner to corner uh, carpet. And then I was holding it double with some tent sale worsted yarn, which is basically very similar to Bernat um, Super Value yarn, uh, which is softer than Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver, but it's not as soft as Bernat Premium, just for sort of um, an idea. And it was in this color called Cinnamon. And when I got it, I thought to myself, that's not what Cinnamon looks like. It was just this off, awful color. And I'll pop up a picture of a little tiny bit I have left over. But when I compare it to the actual cinnamon I have in my house, they are identical in color. So I guess your perception of color isn't always the correct color. Anyway, it was great to be able to use that up because I really didn't have a, a use for it on its own. It gave the carpet a little bit of extra sturdiness, um, but I had a ton of trouble with the border on this carpet. So basically I've just given up. It's not 100% straight, but the stitch counts are even. And I'm gonna take that for the win. Um, you know, at the, at the beginning I was kind of disappointed and considering this a bit of a fail, but I love how the stripey pattern worked out in the carpet itself. And if it bothers me enough, next year I'll turn it into a pillow. <laughs> anyway, for now she's done and she's been sitting at our front door for weeks already, so I guess she at least serves a purpose. And I'll put the colorways of the um, Lime Brand yarn that I used in the description box below if you want to have a look. I thought it would be interesting if I kept all my labels for September. So I'm gonna quickly go through these and count them for you, but I'm just keeping them in this huge coffee tin and I'm gonna count these and I'll be right back. So I counted 47 ball bands and I know it's not exact. Um, all of the yarn that is in my cake pop blanket is in that um, bucket. Um, and I, it had been started at the end of August, but for the most part, like I'm somewhere around 50 skeins of yarn for the month of September, so. For those of you that have seen my yarn room, it does go by really quickly and my hiatus is well intact. I have not bought any yarn in September. The only acquisitions I have were purchased in August. So, so far so good on the yarn. 
I was so looking forward to doing this video for because I was thinking for the first time I wouldn't be sweltering in my yarn room because it's been so hot this summer and then the hot weather came back so it's not as bad as it's been but it certainly is not cool today so I had to pull out my poncho capelet and just go with the tank top <laughs> anyway now we're gonna get into all the cozy things I've made when the weather was cool um, so using some Barcelona yarn uh, I had purchased some of this on clearance and was also gifted some of it so I have tons and this took up the end of a skein so one of the skeins that was gifted had some taken out of it and then a whole skein so I'd say maybe two and two-thirds something like that a little bit more than two and a half and I just started by checking how far that the one that was on the go would last and it's just a straight up double crochet scarf with a single crochet edging including at the bottom and we'll wrap it so you can see how long it is so this is exactly halfway and I'm doing Debbie's way of wrapping one one direction one the other direction and it would go twice as like if you really wanted to tuck and be and be snuggly I was I was unwrap it the wrong way um, you know or just like that um, I love how this colorway worked up and the colorway will come across the bottom of the screen and also be in the description box below because um, I don't have the ball band handy because of what I shared with you earlier about all of my ball bands for September um, and, and yeah this was fun to work with I think it was good to just do something simple with it the first time nice open stitches that and it's still nice and drapey and, and, and uh, swishy out of that yarn I got the scarf and I also got a hat I like my hats nice and loose because I have the bangs or the fringe depending on how you look at it and for me they always look better if they're loose and I can just put them where I want this one's actually a little bit tight for me just a slight bit slouchy with the edging here um, so this I just made it up as I went along I started with a double crochet crown pulled in some front post stitches alternating with just regular double crochets and then um, just decrease down at the bottom using some single crochets and still had enough for a pair of wristers and again these were just some uh, double crochet with um, um, post stitches at the bottom for that nice little um, look of the edging and some single crochets at the top and there's a set Oh, I found an end. Uh oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm happy with this yarn. I'm happy because I have quite a bit of it in different colors. So, first set, cozy set for fall, fall and winter. So, still working my way through my Make Nine, and I wanted to get a couple of things done this um, month. I actually have had one of my Make Nines done for quite a while, but I wasn't going to be gifting it until this month. So, what I ended up making was an actual dust mitt, but like a mitten. I'll pop up a picture here so you can see it because it's already been given away. Um, but I was so happy with how it worked out. It made me really comfortable to be able to make some sets of mitts for this coming winter. And I will be doing that, but it may not be till November. So for now, I'm going to consider it checked off my list. It was fun and it's uh, given me some good ideas for making some warm ones for the winter. The other thing on my Make Nine was the boomerang shawl. So finally got around to doing that and I watched Fiber Spider's tutorial and then I just kind of did my own thing. I followed a lot of the advice that he gives on there in terms of how to build it, but I just really did my own thing. So this very much just looks like a triangle shawl, but it does definitely curve in on both of the ends. And this yarn is Bernat Premium in shamrock variegated it's dark green um, and then a kind of turquoise color and a kind of olive green color I'll hold it a little closer maybe it'll show better yeah that's more like it and I did a kind of a simple edging on my own there with the uh, chains and uh, slip stitches um, and was able to there was three I had three of these so there was enough to do a hat as well and I'll see if this one can go on my head oh it can good <laughs> I never know how big they are. So this was just a straight beanie pattern. I did this in the spiral until I reached the, the brim. And then I just did some post stitches to give it some texture. So another little set. Hopefully someone will enjoy that this fall. 
Something I'm playing around with, and I'm hoping to share this with you maybe next month, is a, a pattern for a uh, ear warmer. Um, I like. I, I like the look of the twisted ear warmers, but I don't like the idea of it being twisted because um, I don't want extra fabric here. <laughs> so I did one where I'm just decreasing it in the middle and I put some um, double crochet cross stitches in the middle as well to give it some texture. So obviously the next step is to make it in a solid color so you could actually see the texture. And then I just trimmed this with some of that uh, Huga fur that was on clearance. And this was the last little bit I had of one of the um, homespun yarns that I had used with the um, Jade and Stitches Granny Square game. Anyway, so here she is. I will continue to work on it a little bit until I get it exactly how I want it. And then I will share it with you what I've come up with in the description box, maybe next month. Hopefully next month anyway. Very cozy. So as you know, I'm participating in Set Up From Set Us Places uh, Calendar Cal 2020, which is to make hats uh, following uh, the color scheme of a calendar. So popping up a picture here, and here's the hat. This one's kind of snug for me. Um, and I just kind of made this up as I went along, so I'll talk you through the stitches in a sec. Uh, the primary yarn is this Red Heart With Love, which was a gift. And it's a nice olive green color, which I thought went with the calendar very well. And it's got some nice gold glitter in it. And I love when the hats get a little shimmer to them. And I just held it double using the rest of a um, Mandela Tweed Stripe. Um, that Mandela Tweed Stripe has gone quite far because I've been using it for hats primarily. So I made this hat from the top down and I decided to start with some really puffy puff stitches and then I did um, a bunch of cluster stitches, a, a couple rows of that, and then out of the clusters came some double crochets because I was still increasing um, until I got to sort of the middle of the hat and then I did another section of clusters and then some more doubles and all the way down to the brim. And so I did a round of loop stitches, so back loop stitches to get that to really pop out. Yeah. So that worked out well and I love it when you have a yarn in your stash that you can use that really represents the calendar plus you can also get rid of some some scraps and for this whole year so far I haven't purchased any yarn specifically to do this crochet along I have just used stuff in my stash which is awesome so I have made several ponchos in my day uh, I think I went back and made a list in in my notes so that I could kind of keep track and I think I've made over 25 ponchos since 2018 um, and a lot of them were orders <laughs> for uh, one friend in particular uh, a lot of little people in her life wanted ponchos but um, I think myself I, I have made three for me um, but yeah they're quite popular and it's been ages since I've made a regular granny stitch poncho so uh, a friend of mine, ours, I would even say, um, is having a baby and I would like to send her something. So um, I made a tiny poncho for a tiny human and here it is. Isn't it adorable? And I have no idea what I'm doing with sizing. So I really hope it's the right size. <laughs> I wasn't going for like a newborn, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, the little one will get somewhere out of it. For quite a while um, and I used the Bernat stripey Bernat handicrafter stripey cotton I wanted it cotton for sure and this colorway is called Jade Bisque and when I saw this I thought this yarn comes nowhere close to being dishcloth to me it is completely baby to me and fun baby too like I love the, the colors and so you know the striping works up as it does coming out of the cake um, but it's cotton and it's soft so hopefully it will be enjoyed for a long time um, I did um, only one chain so that the um, holes would be kind of small and no chains in between the shells just to keep it a nice sturdy fabric but cotton and really breathable so we'll see how that goes over because I'm planning to send it soon so I went a little cowl crazy in September. I partially just wanted to use up some yarns I hadn't worked with before. Um, and it started with this, Bernat Wavelength. I had two of these, thank you Debbie. 
but it's not necessarily for me. So uh, a, a smaller person would get a better fit this way. And I just love them when they're nice and tall like this because you can whip them up over your head if you want and have it be cozy like that. Or you can just fold it down and keep, you, keep it snugly to your neck. Um, it's awesome to keep one of these in your car even because if you don't know that you're gonna need it and it's there, it's a hat and scarf all in one. So um, double thick and it's already a bulky weight yarn so it's super cozy. And I just love how it worked up. So pretty. So that was the two skeins. They're, they're larger skeins, I think 140 gram skeins of like a bulky five yarn, but held double. And so it's pretty stretchy too. So tons of fun and super quick make. I think this was made maybe in one or two sittings. And then because I was discussing making, potentially making something for a friend, uh, I pulled out some latte cakes of mine. The colorway for this cake is called Mineral Vineyard. And I'm gonna pop up a picture here of the actual cake and because the two that I've used so far are completely gone. And what I ended up doing, uh, there's a lot less blue in the cake than there is green. So it started with this one. There's a lighter blue and then a really, really um, bright blue in it. And together they look so denim-y, it's awesome. So this is the first one and this is a smaller cowl. And again, going for kind of neck warmer size. Or this way. So soft. Now, it's reminding me, I forgot to say something about the Lion Brand, uh, that 70s yarn. The fibers do fly off this quite a bit. So if you're really easily bothered by that, then it's probably not the best yarn for you. Um, I'm very interesting to see what's gonna happen with the wash and dry, because I have seen what some people said. But, oh my God, this is like butter and it's it's super, super soft. So I have someone in mind for this and hopefully they will enjoy it. Um, so so this does get on you a little bit. It, it mostly just kind of irks you. Like you can feel it like I've just been touching it and it's, it's just a little like that. But um, I'm gonna pop up a picture here because I forgot to mention it with the rug, but that 70s yarn when I was working with it it left a trail like look at that that is my legs <laughs> covered in the fuzz from that 70s yarn so as much as i had a purpose for doing that rug and i'm glad i did the rug i would never use that yarn again ever and i would never make something with it i can't be, believe people were making like vests and things out of that you'd be wearing it literally all the time and so there was a lot more of the greens and there was a darker green and then a lighter green. The lighter green is like a very sea foamy color, which I love. The darker green, there was two different darker greens. So I was kind of bummed about that because the blues and were all the same. Um, but yeah, I checked the label and the numbering is slightly off. Like one of them had whatever the number is, the last three digits were 100 and the other one was 001. One of them, the dark green was a deeper olive green and the um, other one, it was a, a grassy, leafy green. Um, and they were different enough that you could, you could tell. So originally I was gonna make some single stranded um, neck warmers out of it, but I couldn't keep the two dark greens together because they didn't go. So what I did was I ombre it. And it's probably gonna be fairly hard to tell anyway on here, but you can tell slightly that there's two tones so there's the darker one and then there's the one that got a little bit a different color of the dark and then it goes to a section where it's just double um, of the, the light color so it worked up really nice and then i used the double of the light green to, to trim it i usually don't trim the cowls but i did this one so i made this one super wide so it will cowl more and it won't be as close to your neck. So if you're not someone who loves things close to your neck, then this is great for that. Still goes up, not as, not quite as tall, but it would still, in a pinch, it would still keep you cozy. So that was Shell being cowl crazy in September. I was trying to be mindful in September of the yarn I was using and using it up. 
Um, so if I couldn't say that the leftover yarn would be good for X, then I made some scrunchies with it. So I got a bunch of latte cake scrunchies now, which I've never had before. And I have a bunch made of the leftover um, Bernat Pop yarn that, that I finished my what I'm calling cake pop blanket <laughs> with. Uh, I wanted a name for this blanket and all of a sudden it dawned on me that it's cakes and it's called Bernat Pop. So how about a cake pop blanket? So when I left you it, in the August video, I think I had about six of them done, six or so. Um, you can go back to the previous video because all the colors are listed there. And I finished, I had 10 different colorways of Bernat Pop. There were certain colorways that I had only one cake of. They're all in this blanket. And then I had two cakes that I had only two of. So they're both in this blanket. I purposely did not color control this blanket at all. And I prefer the texture of granny stitch blankets when they're worked back and forth rather than in the round. So I, because of that, you're doubling back on your color some of the times. So rather than being able to spread that color all the way around because you're going this way, um, you're doubling back, right? Because I'm flipping it. But I preferred that texture. I decided from the beginning and then I had to stick to it. So I'm popping up a couple of pictures of the blanket or I have been popping up a couple of pictures of the blanket up until now. Uh, and now I will show you. I can't show you properly because it's huge. One thing I loved about doing this is that for example, with the king size, there's I had no sense of the amount of yarn it took. Like, I mean, I could do the math on the 340 gram huge skeins of cotton, but it didn't tell me anything for future blankets. This did. Um, the cakes are 141 grams. So that means if you have a 100 gram skein or a 200 gram skein, you can kind of figure that out really easily now, or at least I feel like I can in my mind. Um, so, and, and the size it is, so it, as you saw it on my bed, it's draping over the width wise of my king size bed and it's coming up almost to the pillows. So it's like, it's a big blanket. I didn't measure it, but because it is what it is, right? It's a scrap blanket, not a scrap blanket, a stash blanket. <laughs> so let me get it going in the right direction. Oh yeah. And so what I ended up choosing was just Aaron. Um, so I had some of this in um, Red Heart Comfort. I felt like the squares were big enough, so I just did a, a, a final round of half double crochet on each one, and then I slip stitched them together using the back loop of one square with the front loop of the other, so you get that kind of nice texture, but it also helps it lie nice and flat, which I prefer. And either side of the blanket will look nice in terms of how that is sewn together. And then the whole thing just got a double crochet around the entire, half double crochet, sorry, half double crochet around the entire thing after. Um, okay, so here we go. I'll see how far we can get. So we have, and any additional colorways that were not already mentioned in the last video will be listed in the description box below. And so this is the end where this one and this one are in the blanket twice. So, okay, and then we'll go to the next section. In the next section. And I really can't see you at all. I'm gonna see if I can get to the bottom. And the last section. So it's super, super huge, okay? So it, ouch, it is. <laughs> my knee is not getting along with the blanket right now. So it is, I have an entire square under my feet and I can go like this with it. <laughs> so we'll see anyway that was fun I'm glad I did it and I'm glad I learned from it and uh, I will do other ones in the future burnout pop is not my favorite cake yarn to work with by any stretch um, my absolute favorite is Caron big cakes because I like that acrylic um, the texture of that acrylic so much with the burnout pop uh, as I mentioned last month I have a Whole bunch of the radical botanical that's been gifted to me and even those balls which were all relatively newly purchased for my birthday in August um, they're not the same texture 
and I had got some from the Spin Right Factory outlet sale um, in May and they're nice and soft but some of them are just a lot harsher than others but the labels are identical there's no difference in the labels it's not that I adore Bernat Pop it's fine some of it is much nicer than others this purple one is very soft um, but it was a fun project to do it was just a fun way to use the yarn um, yeah so I think I've talked about that quite enough <laughs> All done with finished objects, so moving on to whips. And for my whips, I don't actually have them here. They're gonna just pop up here on the screen. I only have three whips. Um, good news, I am getting really close to the finish line in terms of the making of the squares and triangles for my diamond granny square blanket. I have finished all the black squares and I have over half of the triangles made. I think I have eight made. So that would leave me with six more. I might only need five more. Um, and yeah, so gonna finish up those triangles and try to get that put together in October. Um, I'm just trying to remind myself that it's gonna be easy to put it together. It's a lot of squares though, so we're gonna have to uh, take our time and I'm gonna need some help from my hubby. Uh, shout out to Shin Virtuality. My hubby has his own uh, YouTube channel. He, he's into gaming the way I'm into crochet. So if you want to check out anything to do with uh, some gaming playthroughs on mobile, check out Shin Virtuality. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And lately he's been obsessed with Minecraft. And I actually said that right because I've been calling it Mine Creeper lately because I made him a creeper. <laughs> anyway, um, you can check him out, but he will help me with the squares. He always helps me with like the color, determining the palette, the order. I've made a few granny square blankets and we always like to lay them out and then I pick them up in their order, but it's gonna be a little bit trickier this time because of the assembly on the angle to make it look diamond when it's put together. So that'll get done in October, at least I'm really hoping it will. And then I also have a birthday gift blanket that is about three quarters of the way done. Um, I'm using Red Heart Comfort Shimmers in the color gray silver and I made up this blanket pattern on my own and I will provide it to you when the blanket is shown as a finished object so that'll be next month um, so that if you're interested in the pattern I used you can follow along and yeah just showing you a small picture because it is a gift and although I don't think the person will see this video before it is gifted I do want to try to keep it on the down low for now and finally I made myself or I'm making ourselves Ooh, bird. Um, I am making us a new mat for our bathroom. So in our bathroom, the walls are, are chocolate brown and we have, you know, a chocolate brown vanity and there's a bunch of different colors in terms of the accents. And recently I pulled a lot of gray in there. So for about a year now we've had some gray accents and I've been playing off the brown and the gray and it's worked great. We decided to put the brown accents back. And so I thought a nice pop would be with this uh, tealy blue because I was gifted some of this Bernat blanket yarn in the mallard wood colorway and I thought what the heck might as well give it a shot and I am about two-thirds or more done on that as well and I, and that's all for whips for right now and it's plenty <laughs> I do have plans for October and there's some substantial projects that I need to get going on so um, I'm not gonna get into that too much right now because um, this video is gonna be long enough as it is the one last thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to pop up some pictures here, there will be links in the description box below, is Z's crochet along. She is doing a crochet along for her birthday, that's Zelda and RJ3, uh, I'm sure everybody knows, <laughs> but I wanted to participate in a way that I can. I do not have time to get another Just Feel Festive shawl on my hook before October the 15th. There's just no way, <laughs> there's no room at the inn. But I've made three already, so I wanted to pop up pictures here and show you them again. Um, there will be links in the description box to each of the videos where I spoke about these already. Um, obviously one of them was just last month, so you may remember that, but the first one I made was a ways back. It was probably January or February, and then the other one got made like March-ish. So, there are three completely different styles, three completely different, um, you know, looks, and I love them. So I do have three of them, and I will be happy to wear one on October 15th, which I believe is Z's birthday, in uh, solidarity to celebrate with her and everyone else. And I'm glad people are having so much fun. I was watching Lisa from Lisa's Crochet, and she was having a, a hoot making hers, so that's awesome. 
Anyway, uh, one last little tidbit around acquisitions. As I mentioned last month, I am on a yarn hiatus because I have enough yarn and I don't really feel the need for any yarn right now. It's funny though, you get asked for certain things and you don't have it in your stash, but it is what it is. Sometimes I know you're not going to find it anyway. However, um, I had a spin right order that had not arrived yet. So the order was made in August with some birthday money and the order did arrive. And I have to say for the first time ever with spin right yarn factory outlet, I'm very, very disappointed. Um, I got the correct amount of yarn that I ordered, but the co colors were completely wrong in two of the things that I ordered. And one is more sort of critical than the other, but it doesn't seem like they're very willing to make this right in a way that's easy for me. So all they offered to do was have me ship it back to them. And I thought, well, what's the point of that really? Like, what is the point? Anyway, uh, they had the Endless Impeccables and they were on for $10. So buy three, get one free. But the color I ordered was soft gray. So I ordered three of them in soft gray and then the freebie was supposed to be in this color and it's called soft taupe and I got all four in soft taupe. So the whole purpose of my order was to stash, to uh, stock up my stash for gray. And now I have a whole bunch of this. Now it is super soft and I do have a use for one of them, but what I'm going to do with the other three is a mystery to me right now. <laughs> the other thing that was a mistake was I ordered a whole bunch of this um, Bernat Handicrafter in this color called pepper variegated, which is a great color. Um, when they showed it on their Facebook page, it looked a lot more like it was different tones of gray with white. It did not look like you're going to see some blues and greens how you do here. I still really like it. I like it mainly because it's a masculine color. Um, but because of the buy three, get one free, I actually ordered six of these and then two in just their off white colorway, but I was given all eight in this and, uh, you know, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> if if I had known that the off-white was not available, I just would have changed my order. And I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. When I was called, because you do your order by email and then someone has to call you to get your credit card, it specifically said in my email, I would like to know if it's available. And then the lady on the phone said to me, everything was available, so all we need is your credit card number. And I'm like, great. So. Now it wasn't actually available. And you know what? I would have changed my mind. I still would have gotten some yarn, but I wouldn't have bothered getting the loops and threads yarn at all. And I would have only just got four of these because I did not need eight. <laughs> Six was a stretch, but I did not need eight. And thankfully the last thing that was in my order was actually the only thing that was correct. And I got the eight balls I was supposed to be getting. Uh, they were packs of two, so buy three, get one free. Um, and that one I'm really happy with. Um, I can't talk much about it because it's part of a Christmas, it's for a Christmas gift, but uh, at least that part was correct. And yeah, I'm, I'm just very disappointed that they didn't just say, you know, okay, well, sorry about that, the shipping's on us, or you can have a X dollar amount of credit for the next time. Um, you know, I've been trying to be very supportive of the fact that it's a mom and pop in terms of this part, you know, it doesn't seem like the main spin right that manages yarn inspirations out of the same city, Listowel, Ontario, the main yarn inspirations that has a presence there, head office there, doesn't seem to support the yarn factory outlet very much in terms of these sales. I mean, what do I know? I don't know for sure, but it is completely, um, crazy when these happen and I mean I'm really glad that they do them but I feel like it should have been corrected in a different way uh, I was not told the correct information on the telephone and I did not have an opportunity to adjust my order and I spent my birthday money on this yarn so I did not want yarn I didn't need and it seems really silly to send it all the way back to them you know even if they had agreed to pay the shipping to have it come back to them um, it just seems like a bit of a waste. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but disappointed. And I'm a very glass half full person. So I think it's important sometimes to recognize that things are disappointing and they don't always go according to plan. So on that note, <laughs> that's it for September. And I am anxious to get going on some things for October. I have to finish some things quickly because I need them done. And, um, and I also have some bigger projects that I need to work on. Um, it's hard to talk about things right now because things are either for birthdays or Christmas. So I have to manage my words. 
carefully. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I hope you are all doing well. Please leave me a comment below. I love hearing from you. Tell me what you're working on. Ask me any questions if you have any. And uh, I will be back in about a month to discuss what happened in the last uh, in the last four weeks or so. So in the meantime, hope you guys are having a great day and happy crochet.